Hello and welcome everyone to Digitales episode 19 season 2 my name is Fazan Sayed founder and CEO of East River and today i have a very well known guest with me he is an artist a curator an educator he has his art collections in museums around the globe he has recently won the asia award he has a sitara imtiaz but most of you probably know him for that beautiful beautiful pavilion he helped set up in the dubai expo the pakistan pavilion i have with me rashid rana saab how are you today bilkul theek fazan how are you good to be here thank you very much for the time your masterpiece the pakistan pavilion is is beautiful it's stunning it's modern light progressive it's it's got its uh, presence that probably no other pavilion has right and it feels so progressive and modern do you think that's an accurate representation of the pakistan we saw over the last 10 days in the political arena ji we can at least aspire to be uh, uh, like that and the work itself uh, what i've produced the exterior uh, for parks and pavilion that also provides us the recipe uh, how to arrive to uh, you know, that kind of a future very contemporary and very uh, so it has that message embedded in it and you've done a lot with the interior also it also used the rainforest the greenery and it had a no, lot of no that is that is that is that is uh, that is nurjahan bilgrami the curator my job was to transform architecture into art so a building and itself becomes a work of art and that is my intervention uh, and that's the exterior and how did you seek inspiration for that what did you look towards for that well uh, basically first of all i had the challenge to create something very uh, uh, exciting for to attract the audience um, so the, the the solid mass of the architectural you know sort of uh, uh, structure that we had uh, it had to somehow optically uh, become a, a breathing building you know it it's, mm-hmm. it was all very solid mass because andar building ke andar jagah chahiye hoti hai aapko walls mm-hmm. space mm-hmm. chahiye hoti hai exhibition ke liye so therefore it the building itself could not have too many windows or perforation or you know uh, transparency or that kind of uh, those, those kind of visual elements so those elements i wanted to achieve optically and that's precisely what i've done uh, taking having taken inspiration from one of my earlier works um, which had the reflective and printed surface uh, working you know uh, in conjunction with each other so that uh, had worked for me in the past so i thought i can use it in this scale and it worked here too in terms of conceptually the inspiration is really pakistan itself it's uh, seasonal diversity it's uh, diversity mm-hmm. in terms of uh, climatically culturally ethnically so many different kinds of people ex- you know live in this country and 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 and, and i believe that they can all come together in a harmonious order uh, to be to be seen as one to be to be united so seeking a unity through diversity is really the theme of uh, the 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 uh, the exterior of the pavilion that i have designed and how long did it take you to conceive and execute this idea well i've been engaged uh, i was engaged at least uh, i think 3 and 1/2 4 years before the uh, expo was launched um the initial concept i was i i came up with in a few weeks but then there were several challenges and then the project fabrication uh, itself that only took place in the last 3 and 1/2 months okay in the 3 and 1/2 months so the entire structure came together in 3 and 1/2 months that's a very short period of time so the exterior no the exterior the exterior, the exterior structure the, the, my intervention to change architecture into an artwork is what i have done and right. that exterior uh, to the fabrication bit took place 3 and 1/2 months and so if let's say if it if we take the entire process let's say from conception to execution is a is 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 about 3 and a half to 4 years and you know you were able to really display the diversity that pakistan offers in all facets through this beautiful structure why do we not yeah. see more such marketing opportunities for the country around the globe taking place with the initiative from let's say the government private citizens whoever I think uh, collectively we have not realized as yet uh, that everything in this today's era uh, is a brand whether uh, be it an individual a country or a city or a farm or organization everything is works like a brand 
so we really have to work very hard and and, and, and that resolve has to be there especially in part of the government that we uh, have to change perception of the country we have to uh, go into a re country rebranding exercise that can you know uh, that can help things financially as well i mean in, in in as a result of it so we really need to work on that i hope this project uh, can create that kind of realization uh, and they can also uh, recognize the role of art that it plays in changing the perception of a country and you mentioned art you're a faculty at a very prestigious university and you've been interacting with students for a very long period of time and in that experience do you feel that art and artists you know artists are born or are they trained in in such educational institutions ji i am a founding faculty here now currently serving as the dean of the school of visual arts and design uh, at the uh, beacon house national university also known as bnu and uh, from the day one myself and my colleagues we uh, we had this agenda uh to produce artists uh, and designers uh, who can work with a bigger and wider canvas in mm -hmm. terms of your question whether mm -hmm. artists are born and, uh, or trained uh, i think everybody is a born artist in that sense and 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 everybody has a a creative impulse it just uh, it just that in order to work professionally uh, probably it helps to be at an art school because art school helps you uh discover the artist in you or to it facilitates you to become a professional artist i think that's the role art, art schools play and if there's someone who has the passion and and for art and is willing to put the time but the output is just not where it could be you know what what is the path then because if they're not able to create works that you know are as good as let's say some of the best around them yet they're very passionate about it should they then say okay you know what this is maybe a good as a hobby and i should look at something else for a for an income for my life how do you deal with those situations um look i mean i think there is no recipe for uh, for a successful painting or successful uh, uh, novel or film you just have to strive for it passion means that you have the interest in something uh, so if as long as the passion and interest is there uh, then you will reach somewhere uh, there is no there is no formula of, uh, per se for 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 uh, for a guaranteed success and and i think uh, um it changes with time the times are changing either with the age that we live in uh, the mediums of dissemination are changing so one can always uh, have, one has to be adaptable to the situation and changing times i mean that's one skill one we all ought to have in the 21st century that things that do not work for you you can you know um shift your goals and and, and you can adjust you to the uh, needs of the time and and just stay up to date and and and, and with the cutting edge you know technologies and and, and possibilities of how uh, one can disseminate and then first of all how one can create works and how can those they be disseminated for a wider audience and so you you've been educating for a while now um and you've been involved with the education system is there a, a reason i mean you could be a curator you could be sort of a full time artist yet you spend time in education is there a reason that you are focused on the education side is there an outcome you hope to achieve by educating students on art in pakistan uh, absolutely number of reasons uh, first of all uh, my personal reason that i feel art making curriculum making uh exhibition making being an artist educator or curator these are all uh, forms of production and 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 though i introduce myself as an artist because it's easier to uh, for people to understand it's it's useful it's beneficial to you know for my branding uh, as a mm -hmm. creative person but if you ask me honestly i do not when i work i do not carry any labels in my mind i i don't think of myself as an artist or a curator or educator or anything i just think of ideas that there are ideas mm. and they have to take some kind of form and being in pakistan there is so many opportunities because we have we can if you have an exposure and you have ideas you could really make a difference and i feel that uh, in addition to my art making uh, i could make a difference in terms of being associated with academia as well uh, and then also it gives me a purpose as well i mean i don't want to be exhibiting and showing uh, internationally 
and living in Pakistan, not you know having a real life here. So now it gives me that opportunity to come to work and to be part of a real uh, life experience uh, uh, where I am, where I'm located and, and rooted, and and then let my work uh, emerge from that experience. So that's the other reason. And and uh, I mean I hope uh, you know with the help of my colleagues we are trying, we are making some difference and producing uh, you know new minds or facilitating uh, younger minds who actually are going to make a bigger difference because we i'm i'm very uh, hopeful uh, with the, uh, from the uh, manelli millennials and gen z's who are often seen with suspicion but i think mm-hmm. they know the century the 21st century better uh, they are not hung up on the baggage of the 20th century and i think uh, if uh, uh, it, in that sense it's a really a two way process as well because it keeps you renewed also and up to date with ideas and 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 the uh, and the vision of the our, our time, if you're engaged with young minds. And so you mentioned the young minds in the 21st century and millennials. And so there's this huge craze towards NFTs right now. And, and you know, wherever you look, someone or the other is publishing their version of NFTs. It's artists collaborating with developers, creating publishing series. You've got some NFTs as valued as high as 50, 100 million dollars. Um, if you look at the World of Women series, you're averaging at least $50,000 for just a digital art form, which you can actually create a copy paste and a JPEG of. That's a whole different conversation. Do you think that this whole um, sort of shift towards NFTs for this younger audience is actually going to have an impact on the art world? And if so, what would that impact be? Uh, it's already having an art, uh, impact on the art world, uh, but to answer your question specifically, um, NFT is uh, right now, it, it is a bit of a bandwagon. Uh, it has become a bandwagon, but it is a thing of the future. It is not to be something uh, be dismissive of. Uh, it is it is here to stay. Uh, it is the thing of the future. It's uh, now we use the term NFT both in the terms in, in terms of uh, as a verb uh, as a, as a, as a, fun, a transactional model, but since people have been using that transactional model for the for the uh, sale and purchase of digital content mostly, uh, so therefore those digital contents are also being called NFT. So this, the word is being used as a noun also. Uh, mm. So, but it's a, it's a very exciting development, I have to say, uh, uh, and, and and of course uh, it has become a bandwagon because of the crypto enthusiasts are investing uh, you know a lot in it. Um, mm-hmm. But it has mm-hmm. a, it is going to widen the possibilities of creative expression. Uh, I see it as a positive development, and, and 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 it will also democratize art in some ways because it will not just be with the few art critics and and, and, and art wallas, uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, a, a narrow mm-hmm. circle of you know artists. So the definition of art is, is also going to change, or perhaps it's changing. We are already, I think, in a transitional uh, phase where where you know people like to call themselves as content creators and not necessarily artists or designers so we mm-hmm. have already i think entered mm-hmm. that era where the, the the visual production has taken another whole angle and 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 and, and perhaps art and design and these boundaries are things of the past and and I think actually this will become uh, become more apparent in the future when whatever we are producing now it will be seen through the lens of that time and labeled or uh, or uh, marked differently And so why is it, I mean, are we behind in Pakistan on the NFT craze for a reason? Because, I mean, we've taken on technology and we've adopted technology very quickly uh, because we were not tied to, let's say, a traditional landline system in Pakistan. You know, so mobile phone penetration is maybe 90 percent. Data penetration is over 50 percent you know of the population so i would say a... i wouldn't say we're really behind i wouldn't say we're really behind uh, it's just that it's not being documented it's not being uh, like i mean the crypto hasn't been uh, the the digital currency has not no um, official uh, st- significance here in pakistan uh, but the things are happening and there are some buying houses uh, i mean i know one of my faculty one of our faculty member our colleague zan ahmed who has started a uh, you know, initiative, and then he's been organizing. Uh, recently, an NFT exhibition took place. Uh, so things are moving, and and considering uh, the um, number of uh, uh, you know the amount of population in Pakistan who have access to internet or digital technology or uh, education, 
So it's compared to that, proportionate to that number of that those number of people, I think we're not far behind, and I think you will see more developments in the in the near future. In the art world globally, there is this huge um, demand, and there's these increased valuations for certain types of art, and that's partly due because there are certain tax laws that allow people to buy art, value it, appraise it, change the valuation, then donate it, and then take claim a tax benefit. And so, you know, a lot of art sees itself get increasingly valued, highly valued over time, because they're picked up by the rich as a means for, let's say, tax optimization. Now, Pakistan doesn't right. have such tax laws, right? You can't buy a piece of art, right. value a certain thing, and then donate it to ED and say, I mean, And also, tax people uh, people like to diversify their uh, their investments, and so art, you know, enriches life, and then it, it helps you to uh, you know have something on the wall in your house, and that's another reason. But uh, but you, you're right. I mean, it's the other factors too. So somehow, for one reason or the other, money is pumped into the arts, scene, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But my question was that why is it, but in Pakistan, it continues to be undervalued. There's some tremendous artists creating some great works, yet the Pakistani art continues to be undervalued. Is this the reason why that because this Pakistan does not offer the tax avoidance benefits that let's say the global art world does, that's why art is undervalued here? That, that, that definitely could be one reason. But on the other hand, there are other reasons to contributing factors too. It's not a priority over here. And also... We have seen a pattern uh, all over the world. Uh, wherever the economy is flourishing in a country, uh, then it start uh, uh, the the art market of, of that region starts booming as well. For instance, uh, when China was uh, emerging as a major economic uh, power in the at the towards the end of the last century, uh, then we have we saw the phenomenon of contemporary Chinese art in the 90s uh, to emerge as well. Similarly, India emerged as a major economy in, in the beginning of the mm -hmm. century. And then mm -hmm. we've seen the phenomenon of contemporary Indian art. We benefit from it as a trickle down uh, factor only. Since we're not a major brand uh, in the stage of global uh, you know, arena and, 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 uh, and, and also, uh, uh, you know, the, our economy is not of the size of, you know, as compared to uh, uh, China, America or uh, India. So it's it, that's another contributing factor besides what you have just mentioned. Interesting. So you're saying what you're actually saying is that art valuations of a certain country are actually lagging indicators of that country's perception as a brand globally and that country's Absolutely. performance economically. Absolutely. What an interesting way to look at that. Very cool. So if you were to, okay, so fine. I mean, we have seen that pattern. I mean, that, that, that pattern is there. We have seen that. that. I wouldn't say this is the conclusive sort of reason and 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 uh, there are always multiple contributing factors but this is of one of the major factors but and so if let's say let's say we were running with this hypothesis that let's say branding of a country and economic performance of a country gives you a lagging indicator of art performance if if we were to tell this current government whoever is in power whoever is doing whatever right that you know what let's build a pakistani brand Right. Let's build Pakistan as a brand. Let's set up some policies to promote art and artists who can help build your brand. You know, what do you think are yeah. some of the ways that some well, of the that, steps that, the government that, take that frankly, that would only happen if there is a political stability uh, for the reasons which we cannot perhaps discuss in this program right now. Uh, there is the number one problem uh, uh, as to why we do not perform well as a collective or in team works. Uh, this expo project is, is an exception. Well, we, well, we can learn from uh, the ex expo experience. Uh, the professionals were given the mandate and whoever was given the mandate, they were allowed to do whatever they were supposed to do. Uh, mm -hmm. If we applied it in our larger reality, economic and political sort of political reality, more to say, uh, things might be different. Uh, I would not go into details, too many details as to why mm -hmm. there's not continuity of the political uh, uh, process, uh, the, we're lacking the, in that. Uh, so once we will have the continuity of the democratic system, it will help us develop many, lots of systems, not just uh, in terms of government, but as well as in the private sector as well. You grow as a collective in that country. I have a theory that, uh, you know, um, we do not 
excel in collective team work we we have produced major achievers you know this country has produced major uh, names uh, you know in in different fields in whether it's science or sports mm-hmm. or literature or art but when it comes to teamwork we we lag behind and that's because prim- pr- 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 primarily because uh, we do not have the continuity of the political system the political process and the democracy and 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 and, and, and i think that's where we lag behind and once we have that then the governments will realize that we have to work together uh, there will be continuity of policies as well which includes having a vision of something 25 years from now if we can i mean if i have the power if i can you know if i have the absolute power to make uh, those policies i will have a think tank sitting uh, you know under one roof now and 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 then coming up with where do we want to see ourselves as a country uh, 20 years from now and then you mm-hmm. just uh, almost impose it on to yourself and just you 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 start believing in that and then you'll get there interesting so what you're basically saying is that individual success which we've demonstrated a lot from this country individual performers individual stars in different fields is because of individual talent the only time yeah. we will collectively demonstrate talent or success is if there's continuity on leadership so you know collective talent as a team let's say whether it's a cricket team or a hockey team well, or any it, team it's work. just a, it's just a, it's just a, you know a happy coincidence uh, a, a coincident I, i would say uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know for it's like our cricket team winning uh, can beat any team on its day because of sheer talent mm-hmm. but in order to, for mm-hmm. you to be consistently winning all those matches you need to be methodical and right. in order to be methodical the systems and institutions have to have strength and for institutions and systems to have strength you need a continuity of the system you need the political continuity above all of the of the political system and with such a political instability in our country people whoever are responsible as i said it's not the probably occasion for me to go into, go into details right. but as a nation we have to decide and then that what are the major causes of this sheer political instability all the time and and, and 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 we've seen uh, upheavals in india as well in the recent time especially but mm-hmm. their system continues they know that government will be uh, removed uh, through uh, elections and and the uh, and they will p- p- complete their tenure uh, so you know they have that at least and that's you can see that the fruits of that despite upheavals despite the ethnic problems they are far ahead in as as a brand as as an economy and 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 they you know they better off in many ways uh, as compared to our country interesting so stability is sort of the political stability structural leadership Absolutely. stability is what we need that's where we need to focus right Absolutely. now i mean i'm not an economist i'm not an economist but you, it's no brainer right. that you, more than reforms economic reforms you need political stability and right. nobody has the magic wand sure. nobody can do the you know uh, miracle overnight all you need you don't need messiahs you don't need huge leaders you don't need big big names we don't need that we need we need to make our system our star we need to ensure the stability of this process and the system and and the results and fruits will be there it's no brainer it's an it's very unusual to hear an artist talk about systems processes because typically it's the artists who are deviating from systems and processes and i think that's what makes you sort of the success that you are is you approach everything from a methodical mind and you've achieved so much in your life and all the success you've gotten but i want to ask you one last question and i know you're pressed for time you've you've created diverse works you have presented in 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 uh, collections around the world have you ever hit that writer's block or it's a painter's block maybe and how do you get past that you know how do you sort of let your how do you get that mojo back and you get back into it when you're stuck somewhere and you're like i can't move forward i have to uh, say that i don't believe in uh, these things uh, i do not believe in uh, or I, i i must say that i i haven't experienced that myself maybe i should speak of myself uh, i Very i have not experienced that Uh, so I, then I how is that maybe you tell me that, how it's not that you do not struggle it's not that one doesn't struggle the struggle is always there uh, so right. it's a struggle to make you go to the studio make you sit and then do it. you need discipline always uh, it's a struggle uh, there could be different kind of struggle 
but the benefit that you one has being from the global south uh, for one you have a contemporary very uh, panoramic view of the world because i'm living here in lahore i'll step out of this university and i'll see a 16th century village that i'll pass through mm-hmm. and 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 we mm-hmm. we we in global south we even the while living in the metropolises of this, let's say 10 million the city of 10 million lahore that i'm living in uh, you live 17 19 21st century all at the same time so that is a more panoramic view of sure. the how our planet looks like whereas somebody in the global north uh, will only have a very linear sort of understanding of time and and then how the how they view the world so we uh, people in the global south if you have an exposure and if you have ideas there is so much that can be done and 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 i just i i just need all i need is i, I don't need mojo <laughs> i don't need uh, uh, anything all i need is time if i can buy time i mean I, it's not just me i think many people uh, my colleagues right. my my peers over sure. here uh, it, it, there's so many things that that can be done over here and it, we have our ideas all you need is uh, time and, and 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 so i will ask for time if, if anything interesting so your solution to the problem is throw some time at it <laughs> you need time in, for everything you need time uh, and, for and everything. ideas are very much there the opportunities are very much there and the possibilities are very much there recently i think fazan you're not uh, familiar with the uh, which something which will interest you i think uh, a lot uh, and that news got uh, buried under the big news of expo project that i uh, was part of uh-huh. it's a, it's a, it's my uh, it's a manifesto uh, that i wrote about 3 4 years ago with the help of other minds and 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 and, and three business ideas planet wide business ideas that i proposed as a, 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 as a vehicle for the conveyance of my creative ideas as opposed to using painting and sculpture or photography or video i mm-hmm. used business as a conveyance of those ideas creative ideas so finding creative pre- expression in in life is the uh, is the key feature of this manifesto which is called earth a manifesto of possibilities uh, mm. that i uh, that i put together and i presented at the manchester international festival in uk in last year uh, july uh, and it's for a d- different discussion but it's all about remaining possible open to possibilities and not conforming to uh, certain ideas uh, whether one is an artist or a painter or a businessman uh, so you 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 sort of um, i mean one has the choice to follow Uh, into the footsteps of other artists or what artists do or painters do or uh, people in other professions do or you expand the possibilities of what that profession can be or what the possibilities can be no, so uh, i belong to generation x i belong to generation x and i within my lifetime i've seen so many changes that uh, any other person in the past uh, from that in one generation i wouldn't have seen so this is why this is the only excuse i have for my practice this has has always been changing uh, a lot uh, for the last two and a half decades uh the, the different phases it has gone through from mm-hmm. painting to uh, you know yeah. live streaming based works uh, so i think that is only uh, uh, only uh, sort of it's it's natural only uh, the kind of changes my generation has seen so i have remained open to those changes and those open to those possibilities and and i think that has led to whatever i have produced in the in the past two two and a half decades no and i think that's a fantastic takeaway just not conforming and remaining open to possibilities and i think that that's very well summed up especially for generation x because generation x has had to has been forced to remain open to all the possibilities that have been thrown at them which is i think more than any other generation in terms of changes you're absolutely right and if you can take that mantra forward i think anything is possible and anything is achievable i know you were pressed for time thank you so much for taking the time out and having a brief discussion i would love to pick your brain again on this manifesto maybe in another conversation and learn more about it and how you've applied it to business and i look forward to another chat thank with you thank you for that thank you thank you thank, thank you for the take time take care Thank you everyone for tuning in and stay tuned for the next episode of Digitales. Bye bye.